What's up, y'all? I'm Tom, and this is Like a Math Class. In this video, we are going to talk about how to structure your IA. This is going to be a little bit more of how do you kind of format it and some key tips to keep in mind as you are writing. Let's get to it. So the first thing you should know is that you should have 12 to 20 pages. That's a general guideline, but you have to keep in mind your key goal is to be complete, clear, and concise. Complete, make sure you're being thorough. Clear, make sure you're explaining everything well. And also concise, make sure that you are doing it without over explaining, without going off on tangents like I sometimes do in my videos, but complete, clear, and concise. So that's why we say 12 to 20 pages ballpark, um, but it could be a little bit less, it could be a little bit more, but we found that most of them will fit in the 12 to 20 page range. You wanna make sure you're double spaced with a 12 point font. You don't want to use calculator notation. Now this is covered in criterion B and that means you don't use any asterisks. You don't use the little up arrow, uh, the little carrot as it's called, um, that you're using proper mathematical formulas like you would see in a textbook. That's what we want to see. And remember that your audience is your peers in the class, in your class. So it's not, uh, it's not your teachers, it's not other mathematicians, it's not a college level dissertation. This is a high school student writing a math paper to other people in their class. So if you go outside of the math curriculum, you have to make sure that you're able to explain it to everybody in your class through your writing. If you're doing stuff in your class, you can assume that there is some area for skipping steps maybe, but again, it has to be reasonable steps that everybody in your class will be able to understand what you're doing, even if you're skipping steps. So they can't be big steps. If you're gonna skip, just skip little steps. And remember, you still need to cite all your sources, whether that's an image you pulled from the internet, uh, formulas, if you pulled out a formula that's not used within our curriculum, all of that stuff, you need to still st cite your sources. So what's needed in a paper? Well, of course, you're going to need your introduction, body, and conclusion, right? That's pretty straightforward. It is uh, an essay, so those are the main components. Now, you can write it in a narrative format. In a narrative format, it would be, you know, like it's just a straight flow of paragraphs as if you're talking to somebody or as, ex as if you're explaining something similar to what you would do in an English or a social studies class. It could also be more report oriented. So this might be like a lab that you do in a science class. So maybe you've got your introduction blocked off and then you've got your reason blocked off and then you've got your aim blocked off and then you've got your procedures blocked off. However you want to structure it, uh, you can do it any, uh, you can do it either way, either narrative or lab uh, report based. If you look at the examples that the IB put out, you're gonna see that there are some in narrative format and that there are some in report format. It doesn't matter which way to go as long as again, you're being complete, clear and concise, and that you are putting in adequate levels of mathematics. What else is needed? You need to be intentional with your language. That means sometimes we use in common day-to-day -day communication, we'll say correlation when we actually mean relationship. In a math paper, you can't use something like correlation in a casual way. Correlation has a very specific math definition. Sometimes we say when something is increasing really quickly, we'll say it's exponential. It's not exponential unless it is truly exponential in the mathematical way. So make sure you're being very intentional with the language that you're using, that you're not trying to use math terms in a casual way. You have to talk with knowledge about the mathematics. Now, this is a big piece. We often get stuck in interpreting uh, the, the work that we're doing or interpreting the statistics or interpreting this uh, all these other pieces. While that is an important component, it's also critically important because this is a math paper that you are talking about the mathematics. What formulas you used? Why did you use those? In what way or uh, what do they? T what do these different formulas show you? If you're taking the first derivative, why are you taking the first derivative? Why are you taking the second derivative? What does it tell you? So make sure that you are talking with great knowledge about the mathematics, not just the context that you're putting it in. Some other key things to keep in mind: uh, you can write it in first or third person. You can, your hypothesis does not have to work out the way that you thought. So if you go into something and you say, hey, I wonder if uh, people's squatting strength relates to the goals that they can kick in soccer. 
uh, or football, depending on where you're at in the world. Um, that's fine. And if you find out that there is no correlation between it, that there is no relationship between it, that's okay. Go ahead and say that. The most important thing is that you are talking about the mathematics with knowledge and you're interpreting it properly with mathematics. So don't try and say, well, the mathematics shows all of this, but you know, really, I think it does still kind of work. Don't go down that route. If the hypothesis is not working out the way that you thought it was, cool. That's all right. Now, this next one is a pet peeve of mine, but I think most math teachers would probably say the same thing. You want to avoid, I have always, and therefore I have proven. I see these in two places. The first is, I have always loved soccer. I have always been passionate about coffee. I have always, that's just you trying to overstate your interest in something. If you're interested in coffee, when you are talking about it, you might be talking about the roast, the aroma, this and that and the other, whatever it might be, the grind, the the the, the fi how fine you're grinding it. That's gonna come through in your paper by the way that you are talking about it. So you don't need to use these over-exaggeratory statements like I have always done this and therefore I have proven. You really haven't. Um, you're taking a very small sample size. You're doing it in as scientific of a way of whatever you're looking at, but this is not gonna be a published paper. This is not something that's gonna be published out to the world for them, for people to, uh, to look at this and say, wow, this student has proven that this is the case. You haven't. You've got evidence to suggest that this might be the case. Therefore, I think my hypothesis might prove correct, or I think my hypothesis, <laughs> hypothesis, that I th or I think that my hypothesis is not correct. Um, that's all you're doing. You haven't proven anything. Again, this is more of my pet peeve, but I think your math teachers would probably agree. When you start getting into your uh, limitations and reflections, laziness is not a limitation. And what do I mean by that? Of course, you're not going to say that you're lazy. But if you're saying, well, you know what, I probably could have gotten five or 10 more people to, to test. My response would be, well, why didn't you? You should go get those five or 10 more people to test. That's not a valid uh, limitation. Um, so, you know, a limitation might be, well, I wasn't able to measure the friction of or the air resistance of the ball as it's flying through the air. So, you know, that might have some effect if it's a windy day or not. That's a limitation. I should have had more people kick the ball. That's not a limitation. And finally, remember that the context is only the wrapping paper of your IA. And what I mean by that is maybe your passion is economics. And so you're doing something with the Gini coefficient and, and you're doing some mathematics with that. You might very easily, because this is your passion, get into this long-winded explanation about all of the economic factors that go into this stuff. Okay, that's cool. You put a little bit of that in your limitations, but really remember that this is a mathematics paper. So the key focus needs to be on the mathematics that you used, the results from the mathematics, and math, 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 with a little bit of the economics to put some context around it, a little bit of the soccer, of the coffee, of whatever examples you're using, a little bit of that, but the real focus is the mathematics. Don't lose sight of that. You've got this, you can do this. It might be hard, it's definitely hard. I would sometimes argue that it's the hardest IA that you have to write, because a lot of people don't write papers for math, but you've got this, you can do it. Keep all the stuff that I've put in here in mind. Hopefully it will help you as you structure and you start writing your paper. And I will see you in the next video.